My name is uh, Parag Kachalya. I'm the Vice Chair of Simulation Technology and Research at the Arthur A. Tagoni School of Dentistry here in San Francisco. And I also maintain a private practice with my wife in San Ramon, California. Today I had the honor of speaking to the association about changes in technology as they've impacted dentistry over the last five to 10 years. And during this period, we've had a, a really an increase in diagnostic ability to help treat our patients and discover disease process at a very early level. With the membership this morning, I had a chance to talk about what the world is that our patients encounter every day. And that world they encounter is a very image intensive world with the world of uh, selfies and photographs and smartphones and diagnostic devices. That patients are used to this image based world and, and in my opinion, that expectation goes into our dental offices where patients want to be part of their own healthcare and see things firsthand. So for many years, it was always uh, the framework of doctor, whatever you say is correct, and a patient would decide to go with that. In the world we live in today, that mindset is changing for some. They still trust us as a profession, but patients also want to be part of their own healthcare. And that's part of why when we go into the physician or somebody comes into our offices from a dental standpoint, they may Google some information that we've used, may do a web-based search and the information that we've taken to learn more about it. I believe we can help our patients learn about the issues that they have in our own practice by using an image-based media approach. Is to take images, show them directly what may be happening. So it's, not, it's a visual sensation of what's there and not just listening to a dialogue that may be occurring. Historically, a caries has been diagnosed from a visual assessment standpoint or an instrument like an Explorer or a dental probe. We've also used traditional radiographs to help diagnose caries as well. Today, technologies are apparent or evident that allow us to take an image-based medium where fluorescence devices and imaging can be used to stimulate different bacteria within the mouth. They fluoresce at a given wavelength, and the image can be captured showing a patient on a screen what the issue may be. That can happen at a carry standpoint. It can also happen from a periodontal standpoint to help patients see the difference between inflammation levels. Today, the leap to go into a technology area is much, much easier. And part of the reason is we're exposed to more in our everyday lives. By using something like a smartphone, there's become a comfort level at all age groups. So it's not just the, the young teenager out there, a 20 something year old, but people in their 60s, 70s and 80s are now comfortable with smart devices. And that ease of use is also evident with dental technology today. Because when a dentist is, is considering a significant capital investment in their office, uh, one thing they really need to look at is how their staff is gonna be involved in the process. So it's not just the dentists themselves being comfortable with the technology they're buying, but they have to really get staff buy-in because the ultimate success of the product in the practice, whether it's a material or a technology, is gonna be when the staff understands the usage and the benefits to the patient. So that piece has to be there. That training has to be everybody. So I would, rec I would recommend that whenever looking at a piece of equipment is to negotiate a package where training is included. Is companies always have a little wiggle room. Negotiate something where training occurs in your own office if possible, rather than going somewhere offsite. Then I'll also look at somebody who's reputable. One of the big issues and concerns in the industry right now is these are large capital investments and the support needs to be on the back end. So there's training on the front end, but there needs to be support from the companies on the back end. So when a, a glitch happens, it will happen with any technology, that there is a, a dedicated person or number of phone you know, to call and to get that IT support that's there to help solve the issues at hand. And we know that that company is going to be around for many years to come. So that's kind of the, a few pearls I would give is we need the reputation of the manufacturer to be involved in the training aspect on the front end and the support on the back end.